Uh, book 18 of 2019 was Pigeon English by Stephen Kalman. Um, I didn't really enjoy this one. It was set for my book club and I didn't vote for it, I didn't like the sound of it and I knew I wouldn't like it when I read it but I read it anyway. Um, it's all about um, a young boy from Ghana who's moved to England living on quite a rough estate uh, with knife crime and kind of like almost him growing up and experiencing that situation. Um, I think if you were younger then maybe it would be quite like educational and interesting but as an adult reading it I was quite underwhelmed. Reminding me a lot of To Kill a Mockingbird where there is a lot of themes in there that can be discussed and you know um, developed for children to understand them but as an adult it's kind of just like normal usual information that you could probably already know. Um, so for example um, there's a scene in it that is where Harrison pretty much gets sexually, sexually assaulted but I think from um, the viewpoint of what's consent um, I think a lot of young people wouldn't understand that that's not consensual and that actually that is sexual assault like I think they would just think that that's just a sexual experience and it's normal without actually viewing it as that's quite wrong um, and similarly there's like a lot of kind of like crime that's happening that's kind of just accepted as oh that's just the way it is so um, for example Harrison kind of like chucks stones at um, a bus and it's kind of like for points like who can get the most stones like hitting the, the bus gets the most points he's always working on this point system but actually he's committing criminal offences and it's almost like trying to explain how children commit crime without realising that it's a crime. You know, I, don't, I don't know about you but when I was younger and I hung around with, with people they would throw stones at windows and it was fun for them. I mean I didn't do it because I was quite um, a goody two shoes but I observed like the people that I hung around with committing criminal acts to be fair. Um, so you know it's children being children but not understanding that actually they're committing crimes and they're actually being quite intimidating towards other people like there's there's one scene where um, there's somebody in a mob mobilized mot motorized mobility scooter is that what i'm trying to get at yeah maybe um and they're on the back of it like trying to get away from someone who's chasing them and it's like you're on the back of someone's mobility scooter like that's not okay and he's like oh i thank them for the ride it's like yeah that you shouldn't really be doing that and I think like the, it kind of portrays that message of maybe children don't realise like what they're doing but then the reason I didn't really like it is because Harrison who's the main character comes across as being really like naive and it's kind of like children are not that naive like children are quite street smart at least you know there's children that I've experienced when I was younger and growing up and stuff I don't remember people being that naive uh, you know maybe people that weren't in estates like that yeah sure but if you're growing up on an estate like you've got to be kind of wise about things otherwise you're going to be you know unsafe but then maybe that's the message of the book because in the end Harrison isn't safe so you know maybe that's explained that it's odd because there's lots of things in it that is a bit like you know why is it like that? Is it because the writer's not very good or is it because the writer's very good and is trying to show something from it? So an example would be a lot of the characters don't really kind of show any vis 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 visceral, it's easier to write that down and say it, visceral response to the blood that's on the floor uh, from the, the boy that was stabbed. It's like, oh, it's red. And they're kind of describing it in a very like nondescript way. And it's like, that is somebody's blood, like someone has died. Like, why are you not more bothered? Um, but maybe that's to show the desensitisation of the fact that things like that are happening all the time. So it's just another thing. Or maybe it's like a disassociation from it, like trying to separate your emotions from it otherwise you'd just be upset all the time like maybe it's a coping strategy to do that and I think the at one point uh, we realised that throughout the book um, there's been some italicised paragraphs that they're actually a talking pigeon which you think what the hell pigeon it's so strange but then maybe Kelman's trying to uh, show like dissociation again from such a horrific situation that talking to the pigeon is his escape his kind of like you know he goes onto the balcony away from his apartment um, 
and talks to this pigeon and feeds this pigeon and is almost kind of like separating himself from what's going on around him which is actually quite dangerous environment to be growing up in uh, you know and even the adults within the story are in somewhat danger so it's kind of like he doesn't have any way out he doesn't have any way to deal with it so maybe this is where this pigeon comes from this dissociation with it um but if you're just kind of reading it and thinking what the hell is this pigeon in there for then it doesn't really make any sense so it's almost like there's a lot of things in there that you have to kind of like see beyond and see why calvin's using it's, it's not explicit why it's in there so i don't know if i'm reading too much into it to try and justify calvin and his kind of um literary devices or if it actually is just i don't know what i mean pigeon english it's a play isn't it on on um making up like your own language you know merging together various languages to create one to communicate with people there's a, a lot through it he uses garner gar garner whatever um kind of words um but because you could read them in the context of of the sentence they kind of make sense but I had to google quite a few of them because I was like what on earth are these words um so it, it's kind of like a play on that but then there's a pigeon it just seems a little bit like okay pigeon English we'll put a few gone words in there and and we'll put a pigeon in there too it was a bit like mm, is that is that really a, a successful literary device I don't know if it is um and it yeah I just feel like the characters weren't like developed enough although saying that though like I can still imagine the characters I can still kind of see Takeaway Terry and, and Crossfire and um, I want to say Nikita but I don't think that was her name maybe it was um, but you know I can see these characters so actually I mean maybe um, it, I feel like there was areas where they could have been developed more, we could have gone more into them but then maybe that's because Harrison is a child and he only sees it from a, a two dimensional view, you know, you don't see kind of all the nuances behind how people are interacting until you get older, like you know if you watch like films like Toy Story back again and you realise how funny they are to an adult that a child would have missed all of the references, it's a kind of similar thing I think, you know reading it as an adult you pick up on a lot of things that I think children reading it wouldn't so maybe that's kind of what it's trying to show um but for me they just it just wasn't there wasn't enough in there for me and I, i'd also read various other books from child perspectives and i just don't like them because i don't i'm not a child i don't want to see it through a child's eye eyes anymore i want to see it through an adult kind of perspective to understand human behavior and life and whatever so this book didn't really offer me that um but i guess if you you are a child maybe it would be a way of kind of hinting to you at what's okay behaviour, what's not. Um, there was some question about the people in the story as well, so the adults in the story, of whether they were good role models. Um, so someone brought that up in my, in my book club discussion. Um, and if you think about it, like in the book, obviously you can't think about it because you haven't read it yet, but if you were to read it, I don't know what I'm talking about at all. Um, there's, they don't have very many role models in there, they don't have many people demonstrating how they should behave and I think that's something in our society now that's missing is that, you know, we have adults now that don't feel like adults, we haven't become the adult generation, we're kind of like stuck in the middle like, I am technically an adult, but I don't feel like an adult and I don't perhaps demonstrate adult behaviour all the time, like, whereas I should be, you know, being a positive uh, role model to younger people. But I find that difficult because I'm like, who do I think I am? Like, I'm not an adult yet. So it's kind of that uncomfortable feeling that actually now I should be becoming a role model. And I think the people in the book are probably in a similar situation of they're, that they're, there are no role models and that the people in the community are very kind of like, there is no community. Like the people that live there, they come out when the, the playground's on fire to complain about it. But there's no kind of like everyone looking out for each other and, and having like your mates. Um, as role models to your children and vice versa and stuff it's all kind of like on you to be the role models like I think there's some kind of descriptions in the book of when there's an old lady and she's getting the lift and one of the children spits on the button so that she has to you know press the spit to be able to uh, go in the lift and it's kind of like she doesn't challenge that behaviour and she doesn't say anything because she's intimidated by those children but they're essentially children and the children are viewing her as like a scary old lady like so it's not like they're doing it 
to be purposely you know intimidating but they obviously are as a consequence of that and if it's not challenged it doesn't go away it just it just exasperates and I like have experienced this myself where I've had to confront children to be like that's not the way you should behave but I've not done it well because I've ended up shouting at them rather than actually going that's not okay to behave like that because obviously no one's correcting their behaviour and they probably don't behave like that when they're at home with their parents and there's no one around or in the community to kind of correct that behaviour uh, when they're away from their home so they kind of behave very differently outside the home than when they're in the home so you know because we don't have that community that society to kind of correct people's behaviour outside like this is kind of where all the problems are coming from um so yeah i wouldn't bother reading it unless you kind of like uh, reading from a child's perspective about kind of things like this although having said that quite a few people at my book club really really enjoyed it and really liked it so you know i guess it just depends what your bag is it just wet my bag unfortunately